I think gardening is like you're in your own paradise. I find gardening is sort of wonderful, its own, and it works and it doesn't work and you learn from it and it's a passion. It's its own world, sort of like Alice in Wonderland. You just run into the garden and then you're fine or you go somewhere into somebody else's garden. And yeah, that's what gardening is for me. It's an escape from the real world. Plants need to be able to guide your soul through the season. You know, that you look into the garden and it should tell you what time of year is. Germany had a very big garden culture in the beginning of the 20th century. We had a good, good landscape architect and after the war there was first it was vegetable gardens because people needed to live. And then when the Wirtschaftswunder came, people weren't interested in gardening. It was popular to have a house with a plot, but that was a lawn, a lawn and a forsythia. And only in the 70s or 80s did it start that people actually put loungers in their garden or they actually used the garden for recreational purposes. And it's only now where young, younger people start living in the garden and have barbecues and parties and herbaceous borders and flowering shrubs and they actually and it's not only just a lawn to look at. Well the concept is that um, it's meant to be the place for where everything that's to do with garden culture is situated so that we have a gardening school, a design studio, plant sales. We have shops that only sell accessoires for gardens. So we have Manufacture Me, for example. We have our own shop where we sell sort of very um, good quality equipment for the garden and of course the cafe, which is a place for peaceful and rest. And it's meant to cover everything that influences people to understand the concept of garden. The concept for the cafe is really out of the kitchen garden, into the garden kitchen. Um, we try, although we can't grow our own fruit and veg here, we haven't got a space for it, but we try and work with local produce, um, in season um, as much as possible where we can organic um, but so that people don't lose touch with what's going on in, in nature and in the real world outside. When I'm doing a planting scheme for clients I always try and make it as personal as possible because it is at the end of the day their garden and they have to feel comfortable in it and it's not my garden. And so I try and encourage people to come as, with as much information as possible to bring me um, lists of plants they have already or they would like to have to bring me pictures um, to get an idea for what sort of colors, what sort of textures, what sort of style they like um, and then I'll try and incorporate that as much as possible. It's not always possible and it's not always easy. It's quite often a bit of a challenge um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's part of the fun of doing it. Japanese garden culture is completely different because in first they don't have lawns. You know? <laughs> that is to me that always makes me smile because you know you have you have clipped things and you have raked gravel and which represent the sea or the water. But they are about symbolism. It's a totally different approach. It's very um, empty. You know they like this emptiness. It's like their art. A lot of their art is very precise and beautiful and simple and or their wrapping art it's, but it's it's not exuberant it's just a different way of approaching art altogether i think <laughs>